We're live on the internet. Things are getting personal here behind the scenes. We're talking about Dr. Moms. We're talking about yelling at the stage during concerts. Uh, I'm not talking about yelling at my mom, but uh, yeah, it's getting. <laughs> yeah, happy Mother's Day, Rich. Yeah. I know. <laughs> I know. I'm the worst. Happy Mother's Day. Congratulations, Dr. Bob. Uh, hey, Christ yeah, Dr. my mom got her PhD. She's now Dr. Hello. Mom, uh, you know, not uh, joining the illustrious. Uh, uh, you know, the illustrious Mount Rushmore of, uh, you know, adjacent doctors that we know, Dr. Amanda Rabinowitz, uh, oh, yeah. Dr. Mom, uh, Dr. Doom, uh, the famous, I don't know. Uh, oh, I finish out, the, finish out the Mount Rushmore. Who's the fourth? Um, why did I think Dr. Phil? Because that's really. Okay, there we go. That's it. <laughs> that's I don't all know. the doctors we need. <laughs> that's yeah, all the doctors. Get rid of all the rest of the doctors. Uh, no, I, I. you know what? You know who would finish out the Mount Rushmore? It would be the doctor from uh, from Star Trek Voyager. 
Oh, interesting. Yes. So not Doctor Who. You're talking the yeah, oh, that was the hologram <laughs> version played by Robert Picardo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wow, that was just thank a you, Mike. Sharp uh, one. Thank you for that poll. Yeah, look, I mean, look, Doctor Who can get fucked. But, I uh, think that yeah, I'm with Troy. No, 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 no. I'm here to defend. Evan's not the here. I can say whatever. No, no, no. I, want. I am here yeah. to defend. I'm here to defend the Hue. That's not okay. Doctor Who is amazing. I mean, I like that we did omit the birthday girl herself, Doctor Melissa yeah, Woodward. Yeah, for real. Uh, what are we doing? <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. Not to mention crying. her character. Oh, also, Doc. Doc, Doc actually be named. No, Doc. neither one. They didn't make the cut. Sorry. I'll see myself out. Good night, everybody. Yeah. Yeah. I go right to um I go right to Doc Brown is one of my primary oh, doctors. Also okay. Dr. Ruth. Um very He's your focused primary on care okay. physician. Yeah, I'm very focused on Dr. Ruth. Very fascinatingly, Dr. Ruth's brother owned the farm that Taylor's family owns now. It used to be the Westheimer farm. Yeah. And Dr. Ruth, this was like the big claim of fame in the eighties, was like, This is Dr. Ruth's brother's farm. And so now I realize it's like forty years later, and I'm like, I have to explain to people, do you know Dr. Ruth? <laughs> and they go no and i'm like well she was this tiny little german woman in the 80s yeah, this who was tiny a sex little holocaust it... survivor who liked to talk about sex yeah, yeah it was very fascinating because she had this fascinating lifestyle of being a holocaust survivor and a very atypical like uh you know sex positive therapist yeah. on television <laughs> and a, a very repressed point in time uh nonetheless yeah, yeah. i definitely met her in high school uh, it was very hilarious yeah yeah good times wow. dr ruth yeah, real classic. Wow. Okay. Well, then, uh, new new Mount Rushmore. Okay, great. Uh, this is this is <laughs> yeah, by the bell. The new class. Mm. New Mount Rushmore is uh, <laughs> Dr. Melissa Woodward, mm -hmm. uh, Doc, uh, uh, with a vec waffle, uh, okay. with waffle, of course. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, Dr. Ruth, mm -hmm. and. I'm going to go with Doc McStuffins. Uh, oh, no, <laughs> your own what? mom? What? Oh, no, 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 it was not in lieu of. Get out of your mom. A no, stuffed sheep is taking your place. No, it was it was Mount Rush even more. We're right? expanding Mount Rushmore. Let's That's right. get some more there's people Rush, there. There's Mount Rush more, and then there's Mount Rush even more. Considering some of the people we have had in the Oval Office, I'm actually very surprised there hasn't been like a formal project commission to add more heads onto Mount Rushmore. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <For real. laughs> well, now I got to Google that. Oh, no. Uh, yeah, I don't want to You got to wonder which one of those narcissists tried and didn't quite. Yeah, dude, I, <laughs> I, I, don't, done, I don't need right? to be. I just, I don't, we don't need more like white men chiseled in stone. I'm, uh, you know, I'm sorry. We just Please, don't. you already have I mean, one right in yeah, front of yeah, you. Right? Yeah, right. Yeah, we prefer a digital medium over here. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> I'm wearing a black t shirt that covers I feel up. outnumbered. Somebody help me. <laughs> 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 oh, Mount Rushmore. Trey, who built Mount Rushmore? Which president? I feel like I should know that, but like I definitely don't, nor do I care that much. Well, but since we're talking about it. I mean, I, I do need you to know that like it was not actually built by a president. It wasn't like you know, Teddy Roosevelt just like got off his horse and started what? to pull out and chisel. Oh my god, I'm <laughs> shattered. <laughs> I mean Teddy Teddy Roosevelt could do some stuff. He really like he wrestled bears, he did some mm -hmm. things. Um, but no, uh, Mount Rushmore was actually uh, sculpted by a, na a guy whose name, his first name is Gutsan. Ooh. Uh, wow. Gutsan? I don't even know how you pronounce it. I just know it's spelled G-U-T-Z-O-N, which I always thought was the weirdest. Hold on. Let me see if I can find his last name. Uh, <laughs> Gut Gutsan Borglum. Wow. That sounds like a made up d, &D Yeah, that name. sounds like you just threw a bunch of consonants onto a yeah. dish. Yeah. Hello, my name is Gatsin Barklum. I get Sasha Marikovich vibes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I thought that it was built by aliens in a type of prophetic, like uh, pre-American age. I didn't uh, realize that Goodson built it, but yeah. But you cool. thought it's like Stonehenge Part Two, where like, okay, we've gotten the yeah. faces down this time. Yeah, the the like great leaders that, <laughs> that are foretold. You know, um, I don't know. I figured there was some Area Fifty One crossover energy there. Brenna's here. Hi, Brenna. Hello. Brenna. Well, now, now I need to know: is it was it was it commissioned by Teddy Roosevelt? Who was it? Who did it? Well, no, because he's on it. Had to so been after it. that, right? Was, yeah. I think it was shortly after because I think he was very recent in people's memories. I want to say it was probably like in the 1910s when this happened. 
probably ni- maybe 1920s. Peter Norbeck, U.S. Senator from South Dakota, secured the funding for it. Construction began in 1927. Okay. Oh, ah, well, go. they uh, had about a year before things went kaput, so hopefully they <laughs> yeah. get, get relatively uh, done. Yeah. Got a it went kaput. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> That's wild. Wow. What a call. Watch uh, Schmigadoon, everybody. Yeah, season two. Streaming on Apple season. TV+. Plus. Oh my gosh, is Schmigadoon great? I've heard uh, mixed things about Schmigadoon. I've heard people that completely bounced off it probably because they don't like fun or music. Um, and then I've heard that that it's the best thing in the world. Well, depends on what. So I liked season two more than season one because I really enjoy the musicals of the 60s and 70s a lot more. Uh, your Pippins, your Chicago's, uh, your, your Sweeney Todd's. But there are people that I think like more of the really hokum but like very fun and surprisingly deep stuff from the 1940s which the first season was lampooning so what i would say is if you're a fan of musical theater you would like at least one of the two seasons. okay yeah i i think you you will usually have a preference for one over the other most people nowadays would probably prefer season two because it's it's ones that you're more familiar with the golden age of musicals i think is an acquired taste for a lot of people so that season one is really based on that season two is delightful incredibly well done big fan okay. yeah, and, it's, and most importantly it is you know people who are cast for their voices that yes there are famous faces in there but like they all can sing which is good you Hell don't have yeah. to suffer through a pierce brosnan in mamma mia or russell crowe in les mis where someone's cast <laughs> just to be a famous face but does not have a voice behind it like it's all very well done well and thanks to you i have now envisioned pierce brosnan in les mis and that is a thing i like to get out of my brain <laughs> pierce valjean yeah that's a little uh, <laughs> that's yeah, a now bring me prisoner 2401 yes 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 yeah oh, my um God. i just recently rewatched les mis and yeah russell crowe is in that yep <laughs> i remember like one of the first legitimate arguments i got in with somebody on the internet was Ooh. that year that Not, you know, this was after many illegitimate arguments right yes exactly <laughs> yeah, uh, exactly. it's a truly yeah. unfounded concept no but i remember like it was uh, my first year like post-college so like i was feeling like an adult like mm-hmm. i was feeling like okay yeah. i can stand on my own two feet and this guy's mm-hmm. coming and being like russell crowe perfectly cast for the gravitas of javert i'm like <laughs> but, like he cannot sing in the musical the conversation ends right there. It ends much like his life did, falling on that bridge and breaking his neck in one of the worst pieces of Foley I've ever heard in my <laughs> life. That's where the buck stops. There's only so much acting Tom Hooper can evoke out of that block of wood. I'm sorry. <laughs> that was one of those moments where I felt like truly founded in my own identity and opinion at this very, you know, uh, very, you know, uh, malleable part, point in my life. He's it, yeah, I love the idea of like an adult Mike Bloom ready to like roll in his sleeves up like all right, you know, let me let you let me let you know something about Russell Crowe. Exactly. No, I, I was a firebrand when it came to that. It was a little bit, of, you know, I was a little bit of that uh, post theater degree snob as well. So like the second somebody came in, it's like I like this stuff. I'm like pedestrian at best. Yeah. You fool. Oh, you Seems fool. shallow and pedantic. Exactly. <laughs> Oh I, I'm sorry, I'm not deeply disturbed by the fact that I've just found a picture of the original model of Mount Rushmore. And we were supposed to get like George George Washington's entire upper torso with like a Whoa. petticoat and buttons and an arm and hands. Oh, an yeah, arm and hand. I was, I was gonna say like so it's more like a bus, but if it has arms and hands as well. Oh yeah, yeah no, 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 we're talking That's like a torso. That's like too we much. might see the happy little trail down to the they black wanted court, to like see him black flexing hills. with like the apple axe. Is that the deal? What's going I mean, on? I'm gonna put a link into our chat. Uh, I can't maybe someone can figure out how to put it into the uh, Twitch chat. Oh, but like this image is a little disturbing to like think of like none of the other like lincoln gets a hand up to his uh, up to his so collar. oh interesting so would it be at the same height but they're just building more into the rock yes down? that okay. was the original wow. plan was to dig more and the question is why did they stop i've not gotten to that point yet because i'm actually listening to you know mike talk about his days in musical theater. yeah do you, yeah do you think they started at the head and they just said yeah, we're good. I don't think we need I, to keep going. <laughs> I'm imagining that they like started getting down to the neck, and then there was like a rock fall below, and it's like, well, 
we got we got nothing more. Or and or they were walking, they worked in 1927. They're like, oh, stock market crash. This is all we can afford. I, I think that's probably it. That's probably yeah. It. That feels like the much more realistic end to the, the great construction that was going on there. But yeah, it's very formidable. There's really like a whole lot of statue happening there. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Well, I'm just gonna pretend to not be reading this and uh, listening to whatever mm -hmm. else we talk about. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, wow. I'm not gonna look at the disturbing image because I'm already nervous and scared. So. Yeah, let's get into more disturbing <laughs> oh, imagery. Yeah. You have to be nervous. You got it. You're your uh, your quota of dudes. Um, so should we play the D and D? We left yes. off at like the fun, disturbing spot. Yeah, let's pick it right back up where last we left our heroes. The lot of you having been racing across the stars, pursuing a ship named the Blue Bell, uh, a metamorphosizing ship, a, a mimic ship, as it were crewed by doppelgangers with Lux's parents on board along with a handful of refugees from Homeworld uh, erstwhile runaways after the attack by Vran the Undying you managed to track the ship to Eston's Rest making landfall in Greenwind the port town on the large lakeside a, a large forested world filled with huge mega flora animals and kind of uh, all manner of, of disparate people the trade port at the end of the galaxy as it were um, you guys pretty quickly found information confirming a doppelganger uh, encampment on a nearby island not very far as the dragonfly flies so with Ray at the helm the group of you sailing over the forested landscape uh, came up upon the wide lake that held this small island fortress that the doppelgangers called home you airdropped out of the back of the ship old been uh, deploying his folding boat just in time for his life to be saved by Doc as the boat plummeted down to the water. The group of you rowing up to shore, uh, you attacked the sentries on the roof of the building and were attacked in turn by mimics, uh, which were masquerading as rocks on the lake shore. And after a uh, frantic battle uh, extending over onto the rooftop of the keep Lux finds herself knocking two arrows the oath of vengeance sworn on the necrotic bow Kadras the vengeance bow uh, fulfilling her to fire at Zevox, the doppelganger whom you had met on homeworld seeking an audience with your patron Yavanna driving two arrows into him in a massive amount of psychic damage on top of the piercing wounds of the arrows himself. Zevox collapses, his kind of malleable doppelgangers form, the bluish black muscled sinewy body, the large kind of featureless face and mirrored eyes uh, twisted in agony as he, as he bleeds dying on the rooftop. While your mom, Lux, a woman known as Faye, uh, wearing all of her kind of accoutrements, all manner of sort of like packs and baubles and bags on her amidst her, her multicolored kind of worn work clothes, came running out from one of the doors, racing to Zevox's side, to which she turns looking to you as she cradles the dead doppelganger in her arms and says, what have you done? So, okay, <laughs> I was in this, like, vengeance, like, state of mind. Mm -hmm. am, I, am I out of that now, or am I still, like, looking crazy? Great question, Lux, <laughs> as, like, this haze of red kind of fades from around you. I think that you just see, like, Zvox's form, and the words of your mom kind of, like, echoing to you uh, resonate inside the uh the kind of like the red haze that you're peering through you hear her voice it pierces to you and you like blink for a minute uh like trying to like kind of like seize hold looking down at the bow in your hand at yet another arrow like knocked pulled taut uh ready to fire as like the magic kind of loosens itself on you but I think you do hear the voice of Kadra softly, slightly muffled as it like murmurs from next to your hand, like, um, and now we are bound. 
as like you feel this like tension release from your body the three days that you have been up straight of exhaustion like catching up with you the emotional like weight of being reunited with your mother as Faye like drops on her knees uh, her like bags and baubles pouches kind of like jangling as she like lifts up the dying doppelganger in her hands like um Zvox Zvox and I think that he just says, um, must find Meldrus. <sighs> and it's like this last gasp of air escapes him. <laughs> and he breathes his last, dying in Faye's arms. Um, how did the rest of the changelings react to this? Because there are several more on the battlements, right? Yes. Uh, you, Adam, are on, like, the western parapet uh, where, like, an explosion has gone off. One of the, the powder kegs having a torch dropped on it. The whole, like, roof is blasted open. As you peer down through, like, the blown-out stones of the floor beneath you, you see a handful of doppelgangers in the tower beneath you sitting around a table like looking up frantically kind of like turning around racing for a door one of them stands on the roof with you he's been tangled in a bit of a melee with waffle um and i think that he like screamed no as evox falls and like turns like reaching out as he like he like turns looking back to waffle and just taking a step back into the corner placing his hands up like please Please no more. This is our home. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I like how uh, we've totally lost Troy. He's just like, he does take care of it. I know. Like, I forgot like, about gone. all this emotional. I don't, think, I don't think Reg, Reg is still on the ground, I believe. Like, he hasn't been <laughs> dealing Reg with all this. Is on the ground, Ben. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah, this doppelganger puts his hands up towards you, Adam. Like, please, no more. I think Adam will uh, look to Waffle and give like a curt, curt nod as to be like, you guard him well just in case he pulls any shenanigans. <laughs> and with that, he will stride uh, down the path here. Uh, along, I would say like past Doc. Uh, how do you think Doc is reacting in this moment to everything that's happening? I think Doc is like frozen between uh, no pressure, but like staring at Lux, like looking to like Faye, realizing that this reunion maybe uh, uh, means like she shouldn't like shove her nose in this moment as she like realizes the weight of all of this crashing into you. And I think she turns as you call to like waffle to watch this guard and gives you kind of like a nod from the distance Adam as like her, her her gaze looks back towards Lux where she's just like I think watching uh and not mm. judging or anything yeah I think <laughs> Adam would try to take a hint from Doc here I think he'd assume basically what Doc does he should do and so he's going to remain with her right now from like an okay distance until something goes down or he is beckoned further but he does not want to advance in to what looks to be a very hairy situation. Okay. Uh, and so as Faye is like holding like Zvox's body, I think uh, she starts to like cry. Uh, <laughs> 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 Happy Mother's Day. I think I, okay, like, okay. Yeah. If, if I'm like breaking through this like red kind of haze. With, like, yes, it all voice, like can, kind of Can like I like try to throw the bow? Can I try and throw it like off the edge of the building? You can try, yeah. Make a charisma saving throw. Oh, oh son of a biscuit! <laughs> save mine. Oh, okay. uh, charisma, charisma saving throw, luck. Let's see. Oh, that's Eight, good. 19. Very good. You like snap your arm out. The bow, like, uh, there's a moment where you feel this like resistance in your hand, Lux. Your muscles, like, trying to betray you. This other, like, will in the back of your mind that just does not want to let go. But with a 19, your archer's fingers release. The bow comes loose. And I think we just hear it, like, cutting through the air, like, where it clatters to the ground, uh, landing at Reggie's feet. I'm sure quite dramatically. <laughs> Mom, Mom, wait, what What did I do? Wait, he was bad. No, he was bad. He was bad. He took you guys. 
Why was he yeah. bad? What do you mean he took us? He took whole, you. He kidnapped you. All the of planet you. was under attack. It was the only other ship that we recognized. We, we had no other way of getting out of there. We had nowhere to go. We, 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 we looked to them for safety, for, for succor. We, we asked them to take us. No, but, but, the, but the, 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 no, wait, why, who is he? Why do you, why are you, what happened? What? And I think it's at this point we see second figure, like, steps into the doorway over by the wall. Um, a, a changeling like Lux and Doc, not a full doppelganger like Zvox and some of these others. But um, this man like stepping to the door or this changeling steps to the door and suddenly like the features begin to shift, the white hair like kind of becoming like darker and growing out around it as um, you realize that this is in fact Tam, uh, Lux's mm -hmm. like father standing okay, well, at that's the door. One suspect down as to who Zvox truly was off the picture. And I think that he like gasps, grabbing the door handle, like, "What's, what's happened, Lux? What are you doing?" I don't know. I just, I, I was so scared. You, you were gone, and I thought you got taken, and you were uh, running away. And I, I don't, I don't. Why, Mom? Why are you crying? Why? I, Hi, Troy. Welcome back. <laughs> Reginald, uh, ultimately, as you are still down on the ground, you hear this cry come from the roof. Uh, I'm just putting Troy back in here. Bear with me one second. You don't know what has exactly happened up there, but you hear a cry from the doppelganger's voices of, No! And you hear one of them, like, surrendering seemingly. Please, no more! And then uh, you hear, like, Lox's voice. What What did I do? No! And and you see her, like, snap her hand. And she throws Kadras, the bow, off the roof. Uh, Ridge, I have to interrupt you. Uh, yes. How long have I not appeared to be here? Oh, uh, like, the whole time. Yeah. Since, like, almost right after we started. Oh, that's really funny because I've been listening in on the whole thing. Oh, yay! I've been here the whole time. The and every Lodger once in a while, on every once in a while, I would interrupt and you'd keep going, and I would be like, "Well, I guess okay, you got a so plan." You, you were basically what Kevin was last week. I'm just like, that "Okay, well, I feel socially so isolated." So funny. I was like, <laughs> and at one point you were like, "Yeah," and Troy, I with something about you know, oh, Troy's fight, and I was just like, "Yeah, I'm cool. I'm not even here, so you're fine." But apparently I wasn't You weren't here, actually. So. <laughs> We're I'll be here. Here, uh, specific about like, oh, hey, I have lost you. Are you still in the <laughs> Yeah, that might, be, that, might be, that might be helpful. Uh, yeah, well, um, uh, that's my So bad. I so know exactly you, what's yeah. going on. Uh, okay, great. Amazing. I once or twice may have uh, had a notion of what Reg was doing down below, but uh, <laughs> now we are where we are. Now I, whatever be, Reg was doing extras. was off screen, uh, quite literally. So... Well, wasn't isn't isn't Rich still invisible anyway from the spell that he cast? So I think it's very appropriate. He's not invisible. Uh, he, I, I don't think um, I, I disappeared and I, 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 whatever. I flitted around and mm -hmm. then I reappeared. Um, but uh, I actually do have still meteors swirling around me, a few. Mm -hmm. And so the question that I had was whether the doppelgangers up on the ramparts still appear to be nefarious in some way. But it you sounds see like one no. like raise his hands. There's only one visible up there, and Waffle is like squared up with him, and you can see his hands raised into the air. But uh, at the like lower tower down behind you, at the lower landing, you do see the door open on the ground floor, and a handful of doppelgangers like emerge. And there is as well one like swimming around the island that was blasted off the roof. But oh, that yeah. guy's not in your line of sight. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I think Reg is like just shouting up. Like, I, I think it's when he sees like Kadras like fly over the ramparts and like kind of fall at his feet. He like looks down. What happened? Lux? I don't know. Doesn't sound good, though. 
You hear bad papa hide your life. Don't worry, papa. Lux killed Zvox. We're trying to figure out what happened. Uh, and I think like R Reg like rushes forward and uses his ring of jumping to like bound up uh, toward the edges of the ramparts. Maybe just enough that he's like has to like awkwardly pull himself over. <laughs> um, and I think like Nira's like helping you is just like, oh hey, you could do that too. I didn't know you could do that too. That's great. We can all jump. Is that because we live in space here? I'll give you a hand. Oh, <laughs> let me use my other hand. Uh, here. <laughs> oh, should I you, your hand is very bald. Uh, <laughs> and I think he's like looking around and like trying to just take him to the site. As Lux, you're like kneeling on the ground in between, like yeah. Zvox is like between you as Tam like holds her, or as Faye, I should say, like holds her. And I think that um, she just like looks up at you, like tears like kind of streaming down out of her eyes as Tam comes like walking forward and puts a hand on your shoulder from behind and is like, um, you've made a, you've made a mistake. You misunderstood. Your mom maybe is gonna need a minute. Uh, I mean, how I... much how much time has passed? Can we like call for Rhea to just drop in and do a <laughs> little bit of a quick little CPR? <laughs> Somebody could call for Rhea. I mean, it's been like uh, you know, forty seconds here, thirty seconds, I think. Like, you know. I mean, I mean, can Lux like and and I think. Um, she's like looking at her mom. Her dad comes over. Can she like reach out and try and cast like a cure wounds? Sure. Yeah, you cast cure wounds. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You reach down and like grab hold of him, and you conjure the like planar magics, uh, the like infusions of energy that you give your allies in battle that have that have proven so vital to you in these months in space. And I think like the energy flows from you into him to no avail. Uh, he does not move and nothing happens. And I think that your your mother, like, looking at you is just like, um, why would you have thought that he took us? What led you to this, this grievous misunderstanding? Because people are, are bad sometimes. And you were, you were talking about the... I know, but you were talking about cargo and people were getting taken, and I thought, and... It... Yes, they were. They were. And it's only by the grace of a few good souls in this scattered galaxy that we've been able to make any difference at all. Do you have any idea how much he's done? All those people over the years. How do you think that we get them out? Is this what you've been doing since you left? No. Storming into people's homes? No. Laying waste to their leaders? Mom, no. <laughs> I think you hear Tam from behind like, they. I know that this hurts you, but it was a mistake. And I think she's like, gets up and looks to the doppelganger over to the side next to Reggie and is like, Bring him inside. Help me. And it nods and like turns and kind of looks at you, Reggie. The smooth, featureless face, the bluish purple kind of mu uh, muscles like stretched over it. Um, this like, you know, the, the pupilless kind of like mirrored eyes, these big, huge eyes on it as it turns and looks to you, like stepping away tentatively towards the woman's side. And it reaches down, like picking Zvox's corpse up, slinging it over its shoulder. And I think it turns and looks to Faye and says, um, we must call for a new speaker. The procedures must be followed. He would see it that way. Uh, I think, like, Greg at this point does uh, finally speak and says, uh, well, speaker, what, what sort of, uh, what sort of role, what, who, who is this? Who was this? And I think the doppelganger like turns looking at you and then turns looking back to like Faye for a moment. And I think it's Tam who speaks up, Lux's father, like, 
um, it's um, it's a little complicated, but I, I can Keep try to. Un- They're a small group. They're schismatics from the Shifting Thread. Zivox was their leader of a sort. They have a process to choose a new one. And, and you have known him for a long time? Like, why have I never met him? It's so important. He looks back at your mother and, like, glances back to you. And I think that she, like, glances at you for a minute as the doppelganger is, like, helping move Zevox's body. And he's like, um, I'll explain. And I think you just see uh, Faye like nod to him a little bit as they all like head in the doppelganger carrying Zevox and like Faye following them head into like the tower on the far side of the roof here and begin descending down the stairs out of line of sight, leaving the kind of group of you up here on the roof. And I think that Tam is like, um, your mother has known him for a, for a very long time. Before we met. Ah, first love. <laughs> I think he turns looking at Adam like and looking back to you, Lux. He the shifting thread when when they lost their home world, they found a way to make do. A nation of, of disparate people, doppelgangers, they found others like them, the mimics. They were able to cultivate some to make the ships that you know. They were one of the first great mercenary guilds, truly, in the modern age, but they serve any master. They will take any contract for the price that they set. They have done dark deeds over the centuries. There are some who would see another way done. Zivox and your mother were part of a crew. 30, 25 years ago, they were, were, well, they found something that changed the way they think. They've been looking for a new path a new road ever since. Oh, what did they find? Have you ever heard of I'm a mind I have. witness? Mind witness? And he turns yes. like nodding to you like they were crafted by Ilthalids mind flayers so it is believed they are akin to beholders but but not the same at all this one was well freed in a battle in the stars as evox's crew it was a job gone bad but in the midst of it they found this mind witness and it allowed them to join their minds collectively each of them tapping into it, it in turn allowing each of them to tap into each other. They found a sort of collective consciousness amongst one another, a, a sense of cohesion, solidarity, community that they never had before. And it changed the way they thought of their futures. You keep saying they and not we. Are you not a part of this? Well, uh, your mother and I have been on our own path for a, quite a time, Lux. She was with them then, with Zevox then. And, well, we found each other afterwards. They have been allies over the years. I've met him before. He has helped with many that we have ferreted through the guild's hands but 
uh, this mind witness, it was a particular being? Yes. And I think, like, Reg just, like, side-eyes over toward Lux and kind of gives, like, some big eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Mm-mm. And at this point, if Doc is there, like, uh, arrives as well, I think, like, Reg kind of, like, gives the look over to Doc as well to see if either of them remembers. Uh, the killing of a mind witness. <clears throat> the killing of a wind witness that occurred <laughs> round about two seasons ago. <laughs> um, I think... Yeah, I just love. I think Lux is like just not even. I think she's yeah. kind of staring at the door where like her mom went, and it's like occasionally looking at her dad. But yeah, that's about it. And I, I think I think like depending on how Doc responds, uh, maybe and and Rich, maybe you'll take some liberty here to mm-hmm. like. Do you think that Doc is making a connection, or is this Reg just like? No, Doc's super smart. Doc's like on a level with Reg. And I think that she would like nod at you and then give you the like shrug of like, right? Like, I don't know. But like, I see what you're putting uh, putting down, but I don't know. And I think that then she like gestures with her head down over the side of the keep where you see a handful of these doppelgangers now like emerged out of the keep or moving around down on the ground. <laughs> and I think that Ben uh, admits that he's just like, hey, I know there. Uh, <laughs> I'm really sorry about your boulders. They, we didn't realize that they were kind of guard dogs, but... Well, they fought like hell, so you ought to give them good burials, I guess. Uh, as you hear this whole conversation coming from down over the side of the game. Uh, yeah. but Ben, be careful. Shout if you need anything. Yes, Ben, do not tell them that you were the one to blow up the section of the castle. No, I would never. <laughs> and I, think, I think, like, Reg kind of, uh, it's like, oh, God. He's just, like, looking around. He's like, so many things. Um, first, uh, 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 threat reduction. Uh, if uh, are we, is this a truce? Are we are we at a truce? And I think he's like looking to make sure that these doppelgangers down below don't get don't get fresh with Ben. And I think that Tam like looks to you, and he's just like, um, they're not a warlike people. They're this is their home and. Good. Yes, we, we we shall have time to apologize, for which we will certainly need to. But I I need to understand briefly the 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 scope of, of what has occurred here thus far. This uh, mind witness, um, um, if you believe that they they it are still um, living, oh, I'm certain that it is. It is below this keep right now. They brought it here after the fact, and well, they found oh, this, well, a home here. Certainly may, may a relief. We go see it. I've never been so relieved to know an aberration was mere feet below me. I. Well, we could. Perhaps it would help resolve some of the conflict that has arisen here. Lux, are are you okay? Well, I'm not okay. I'm exhausted. It's been days and days and days chasing down the sky that I thought I'd taken you. And that fucking bow. What about the bow? What do you think about the bow, Reg? I don't think much of the bow. (laughs) I've it's got it awesome out here. Right don't worry me. about it. Ben, you don't, throw don't, that thing in the in the freaking lake. Don't touch that. And I think, was... uh, I think, Lux would feel at her hip a little cold uh, touch of metal as Adam is attempting to bring her back up to at least some sort of relatively supine position from the assumed slumping that has taken place due to said exhaustion. Yeah, I think Lux will like kind of stand up. No, 
Lux. Lux. What? How much of a problem is this bow? I mean, it just made me shoot that guy. It made you shoot? I tried to just talk to him at first, but... I, before I knew it, I... Ben, just was... do not touch that bow! Too late. Oh! <laughs> Evil Ben! <laughs> That's the final boss. Just Stop it! Like, swirling swirling males. Stop from. it! Do not manifest that, I swear to God. I don't oh, think I, it likes me. It's not very chatty. <laughs> it's it said that we're. I don't know. I I was I was fighting. I was I I knew I had to get Zvox and. What what, what 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 did it say? It said that we're bound. It said what? I don't know. <laughs> Where did you get this bow? Reggie was there when I got it. It was given to me by a a, a ghost on a, a a moon. Wow, that oh. sounds suspect. <laughs> <laughs> there were extenuating circumstances, but yes, it was a dodgy bow. I mean, Doc knew that it was bad. I just didn't Doc. Listen. Yes. Yeah, I knew that it was bad, and stop, I told her stop. that it was bad, and I told her that not to be doing anything with it from as soon as she got it, but why would anybody listen to me, right? I don't think I should go inside right now. I, I'm sorry, Melissa, I think I just made Doc way too mean right now. <laughs> I, I don't think so at all. I, I think Doc would be pretty think upset. So I think Doc, Doc would tell like it is right now. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, why don't, I don't, I don't know. I maybe, don't know. maybe you should speak with Dawn. Yes. With what? With who? The, the mind witness. They, they call him um, Dawn. Dawn? Dawn. <laughs> uh, I, I would just like to briefly reset the table here. Because there are many things going on, at least in my brain, my mind, is witnessing all sorts of blown a hole in the side of their home, and we shall resolve that briefly. The doppelganger next to you stops, Reg, and it turns and it says, um, so you're not. The slimes will repair the stone easily. The we slimes. have cultivated ones that lay their waste in cubic manufacturers that we have downstairs in the ranch they will make the bricks quickly yeah well i know a turtle ah. that would uh, despise their very presence but uh, he is not here so we are in good stead doppelgangers of a slime ranch <laughs> well okay then that is one less thing to worry about we have mind witness blow we have uh, Body, and we have a Lux. Adam. Thoughts? Oh, few. <laughs> <laughs> I think we should go downstairs and talk to Dawn. It seems like it wants to liaise with Lux, and if anything goes wrong, I will kill it where it stands. No, no more killing, please. No, no, we must not kill the... the, the no, we would... It does not deserve death. I do not believe, but he's joking, right? Yeah, That's yeah. just he's, he's, he's learning. And humor. He's learning. Um, he's learning. Ah, apparently it's a joke. Yes, it is a joke. Uh, listen, I don't know if you're taking suggestions for the next speaker. We do have a brand new captain who has been doing swimmingly so far, and I'm going to put my what? coin in the jar. Talking about this, the whole captain thing. That's right. I'll do it. I think it is. <laughs> Take me to the throne. Do I get a throne? The leader should have a throne. It is a castle. I I don't think I should go inside right now. And maybe I should just stay out here for a little bit. What? You do what? Pout? 
Yeah, maybe avoid my mom because I just killed her best friend, apparently, of they like 30 years. Best friend. Thanks, Dad. I was just being delicate. Okay. You do but understand. I just, I'm not sure how much is being wait, lost in translation. Can you speak, Dad? I love you so much. Can you please just say what what you're what you mean? This right was now? so much easier when I just was able to get back on the ship at port and say I'll talk to you in a few months. Uh, I'm not sure. Oh, no. it, it's your mother's. <laughs> it's your mother's. <laughs> it's your mother's story to tell. I, I just want to make sure that there's no more surprises. It seems that, I mean, it we should go inside the, immediately. Yes, jump Lux, to this just... one conclusion, and I just are you, are you my dad? I, I did dad! the best that I could. Oh I God. I raised you with oh everything God. that I could. I I, I I gave you my all. I I, I just killed my real dad. I, I may I not. Have sprung you forth from my the seat of my loins, but I, I made every effort to teach you all that that I knew, Lux. I, I I know that we don't have last names, but if we did, I would I would want you to have the same last name as me. I I tried. Uh, Tam, Tam, please, please, if I may. Uh, 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 I just wanted to stop you. I apologize. It just seemed that it was when you were talk talking about things coming from your loin. L L Lux, the, the fact that you would react in such a way means that a, a parent can look in, in many different uh, shapes and uh, forms. And yes, that's the point with him, right? All right, all right. Fuck oh. it. Lux walks inside. <laughs> <laughs> and I think Tam standing out here with Adam and, and Reginald, he's looked at you guys like, um, this is, this is very complicated, but if I can be really candid with you guys, I never really liked him. He's always a little bit of a pretentious jerk. I mean, not going to lie, our base judges of him was certainly one reason why we made perhaps a mischaracterization that led to his current death. And I think, like, Reg just, like, looks at Doc as almost certainly Doc goes to follow uh, Lux. And it's just like, did you know about... No, okay, uh, no. We'll be right in. I think she does, like, one of these at Tam as she's walking past. <laughs> <laughs> Waffle, like, looming menacingly up over her shoulder. Um, sure, as you head inside. And there is, like, a doppelganger standing inside, like, in this kind of, like, tower. Uh, this turret that's up on the roof, like, standing by the doorway as you come in. And it's just like, um, your mother awaits below, spacefarer. Come. And uh, and we'll like escort you down the stairs as the group you are following. Uh, yeah, I don't know if there's like anything that you guys are trying to discuss outside lingering, but otherwise is, is you're all Tam, just. Gonna... Is, I mean, I think uh, first is Tam coming with us, or is he going to hang out? Uh, I think he will follow up the rear. Yeah, okay. if like all of you guys are going inside, he will come with you. I look. I'm. I don't. I don't want to slow us down, but I maybe I can yada yada some version of sure. like. Ben getting back on the boat and Reg seeing that Ben is safely back on the boat and something is happening with this bow that doesn't involve any of our people touching it. I think there's a whole beat of like Doc like has tied a rope to one of the parapets and Ben's like little clawed hands come up over the edge of like, all right, I made it. I've got the bow. <laughs> like bring it back to the boat. And he's like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Turns, you're like you shouldn't be holding the bow and he's like i could put it in, under my armpit does that count if i don't use fingers or are we just talking about scale to wood contact i could wrap it up i've got a a sack i was carrying a sack of extra sacks it was very helpful when you catch a fish on so really okay i'm on my way good luck <laughs> he, like, makes his way back to the boat. Yeah. such a gem Captain, you seem like a great sense of judgment. Would you mind joining him and making sure that this cursed artifact does not come into his tactile presence? 
oh yeah, that sounds like a great idea. I want to see if I can rock the boat enough to make it flip upside down and do a barrel roll. And uh, <laughs> I think Nero like jumps off the roof. I, I think, think they're gonna be fine. Yeah, I think Reg like just <laughs> looks at Adam and was like, if you couldn't believe it, their odds of survival have increased by Nero's presence. Uh, it it <laughs> defies all logic, but the math is quite clear. Right. Uh, inside we go. Um, so you guys head down this like winding spiral staircase and it comes down to like uh, this like, you know, this base circular tower. It's got a big wooden door in it leading back into like the actual like the, the building proper. Then there's another wooden door, which you see is actually open when you come down here with a couple of doppelgangers that are out on kind of like a ledge over the sea. Um, and they appear to kind of be like talking, but, but Tam kind of gestures for you all to like head forward and you're able to make your way into like this big sort of common room there's like a weapon rack up against the corner it's got like a couple of old like practice spears and quarter staffs leaning up against it there's a bunch of like cots kind of like roughly just shoved up against the northern wall like chests underneath them haphazard like sacks of bags and like unfolded clothes hanging off hooks and stuff and then uh, a couple of tables one of which you note is like a, a map table that's just got a few chairs around it in the center of the room and then like a long kind of dining table right and tam like gestures over towards it for you all to sit down uh rich can i can i do something can i go yeah. just like rewind like uh like to that actually like the beginning of this adventure oh, oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> not, not, not like the campaign but tonight <laughs> um i was so uh, uh like uh shocked that i didn't write down uh what zvox said something before he died mm -hmm. it was like you must find blank like mel Drune or something yeah uh, he he told your mom that yeah. she needed to speak with mel Drews. Mel Drews. Thank you. I just needed to write that down. It was really bothering me. Mel okay. Drews. Flashback to the beginning of the campaign. We're lucky. Yeah. <laughs> one thing I won't do is kill my dad. Well, flashback to the beginning of the campaign when we killed a mind witness. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Sorry. Anyway. So you come down in here, and I think that there are, like, uh, there are a couple, like, doppelgangers have, like, moved in to the front door and are, like, in the room here with you. And, like, like one of them stops as, like, another one is kind of, like, lingering outside, talking with the other. Uh, and, and yeah, like, Tam gestures down to the table and is like, you've, you've just been chasing us since Homeworld? Yeah. We had a couple of distractions here and there. Uh get the Yankee ship that's in need of trouble. We're going to have to take care of that, by the way. Their very odd-looking ship is currently parked in your seaport, but by and large, yes, we saw a couple of, in hindsight, misleading images of uh, Lux's parents in danger, and so we scried our brains out and got here in the nick of time. It's very impressive that you were able to follow us that efficiently, actually. That was the... Oh... That, could, this, that was the boat. That, I could, that, oh. I could see Zvox all of the time. Uh, oh, that seems unsettling. <sighs> yeah. Uh, with apologies, uh, I. Lux, is there anything else you're not telling us? This seems to be the time for secrets. I'm gonna just go check on your mom. I'll give you all a moment. And I think he like heads out and like gestures for the doppelganger to come with them and they close the door. I just when when I got really mad the one night and I like slammed the door the you know the on the bridge oh yeah and you can you came to visit me after i had you... almost forgotten well the bow said that it could help if i made an oath that i would 
kill Zvox, and it would help me track him down. And so I did. And yeah, all I could think about was Zvox, and all, and I could see him all the time. I just had to think about it for a moment, and I could hone in. But I, but I couldn't sleep. I couldn't do anything. I, I just, and then when we got here and I finally saw him, I tried to ask him just where my parents were, but I made notes. And so I fired two arrows into his chest. Into my, my dad's chest. You can make an arcana check if you want, Reg. Oh, that's very much where his brain was. Because you were there when she got it. You remember the person who was, like, wielding this bow. And uh, there's, you know, you've seen her, like, since she had got it. And, you know. mm -hmm. 22. Ooh. So you're familiar with, like, a number of, uh, like, powerful enchantments on these kind of, like, um, magical items. You've heard of oath bows before. These bows that are, like, you, you can, like, make an oath on uh, like an enemy as your sworn kind of enemy and they will uh, fixate and focus on them like above all others right but like as you're thinking back to when you found this bow there was a white uh, transformed through on death by unnatural means trapped on that like floating asteroid of a moon as it were and uh, yeah he like basically told you that it was like his oath of vengeance that transformed formed him as such that it was this vengeance unfulfilled and so i think that you pretty clearly have an understanding that this is like a really powerful magical item it's not like something to squawk at and then now that like lux has made some type of like oath to it that uh it's fortunate that she killed zvox because it probably would have transformed her into some facet of undeath if she didn't manage to execute that oath but you're not sure, like, whether or not that that connection is is necessarily um, severed, uh, or a, a better way to say it would be like you have a feeling that now that she has like opened the door to allow this thing to like get hooks in her, that there is a connection between them. As uh, you're like looking at Lux, and you can see like the bloodshot around her eyes, and like, yeah, the sag in her shoulders. Uh, Rich, if I use, if I activate one of the charges of the Astromancy Archive, could I get any additional insight or speculation into, like, where one might start to unwind that? Yeah, sure. You can do that. So you think that it would take, like, um... You know, basic dispel magics are not going to work. You might be able to temporarily suppress the effects of the magic, but you need, like, really powerful magic, be it, like, divine uh, clerics or druids to cast some kind of, like, high-level severing or some type of extra plane or creature, uh, celestial or a powerful, like, fey entity, potentially, or, like, uh, yeah, a higher-level arcanist. But, like, what I'm... What I'm getting at here is like you need something akin to like you know ninth level spells ish to try to like uh undo this enchantment yeah i don't think reg says that part out loud yep um I think, but. like, Reg can intellectualize that, though, that, like, the unweaving of this, whatever it is, it's really, like, old, binding, powerful magic, and, like, Lux has already, like, made the unfortunate act of, like, uh, uh, making an agreement uh, <laughs> with it, and, and yeah, begun that process. Uh, well, um, thank you for sharing. Uh, I think we shall have a long ride ahead of us to unwind what has occurred up to now to cause this to be the case. But you are here and 
alive and with people who care for you. I think, Papa, the problem is at this moment she does not particularly care for herself due to her own deeds. Yes, and I could imagine why. I mean, no, not that one shouldn't feel, or you should feel. Uh, it, is, it, is, it is not reassuring to kill one's parent in any well, in in a way that is. Um, you uh, you did not know, you you did you didn't know. You, you, you had inadequate information and were not in control of your faculties. It, it quite reminds me of a, of a dean of the college where my parents were, who uh, had lost control of the, all of the professors in her department. And, uh, in that sort of rough, uh, very unhelpful analogy, uh, it, 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 that is roughly equivalent to this situation, don't you see? No. Uh, well, I guess I could have chosen something more concrete. Uh, yes, um, I was stupid. Well, I, no. Really no. Stupid. Yes, I was, Reggie. Doc told me I was being stupid and I didn't listen. I just kept hmm. using the bow and I kept just trying to win and trying to be better. And... My mom was always tough, and they always did. She always did cool stuff, and my dad was always just a nice guy who was there and cared about us. And I'm angry and I'm upset, and I don't understand why I didn't know. Uh, and I, <laughs> and you had I, to figure it out on your own. I think Doc says, um, you were being dumb, and I did tell you, but that's doesn't mean that you're not tough. You do tough stuff all the time. You don't mm. need a stupid curse bow. I, I make this stuff, Lux. I know. So I'm sorry. I don't I'm not saying I was right or I told you so. I'm saying just because you were dumb doesn't mean you are dumb. Yeah, but I, I was them. I was so dumb that I I killed my real dad. And, oh, oh, oh. and I can't I can't take that back. I think um Adam would attempt to sit up on the bench uh, as you see his small legs dangle above the floor. As he uh so <sighs> tries to put in the quietest of terms, and of course that means no change in the volume of his voice. That makes two of us. Uh, and he pauses before continuing. I had been aware that Dr. Laiwi, my before father, was uh, accruing many enemies in his dime due to his various attempted misdeeds. And I turned a blind eye to it. Willingly, I had supposed, perhaps in the opposite of your regard, that another day would pass and nothing would happen. And that would keep continuing. That our little storybook fantasy, however depraved it may be, I find out in retrospect, would continue page after page. The interesting thing about books I have learned in the past several months is that every chapter can beget twists and new events. You are never guaranteed to have upon future pages what was once previously written. As a result, I did not anticipate what was coming to us. And while I was not responsible necessarily for the death that underwent my own father, I do partially feel responsible for it. I as well have taken countless numbers of lives with my bare hands, with various weaponries, with improvised weapons, with other people as well. That was a fun time. I'll tell you about that one later once you're in the mood. I have come onto this ship and I have been welcomed back with relatively open arms. I've been given a new papa. I've been given the ability to look at the universe with new eyes in so many ways. I was not beyond redemption. I do not think you are as well. Thanks, Adam. I think as Adam like finishes up, uh, like 
dock like turns a little bit as the door is open behind you the soft kind of breeze the sound of the water lapping up against the shore from the distance as tam and Faye like stand shoulder to shoulder in the kind of doorway these couple of doppelganger kind of like behind them flanking them um and they're like looking at adam as he finishes and i think that tam like just nods softly and Faye's looking at you lux like um your friends is wise you made hello yes hello <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you just started speaking without greeting. I was very surprised, so I thought I'd just say hello. <laughs> hello. You made a mistake, Lux, but I understand what you were trying to do. I just... It's going to take me some time. Why didn't I know him? His path was different than ours. He was... He was on a road of danger. He's been looking for a home for these people. He thought he might find it on Homeworld. That's why he was there. I think she looks at Doc and she's like, um, he's been looking for what Axel's was working on. Many things have been revealed to them in the time since they met Dawn, but I had to make a choice, Lux, and I did not think that this road was one for a child. Many of them have, have died for what they've done. They are not exiles, but pariahs amongst their own. The path of a changeling in this galaxy, it's not an easy one. We wear any face we wish. It's not easy to earn trust in that kind of paradigm. Even less so for them. You don't think I know that? I don't know what you know. I've I, been to so many different places now. I met so many types of different people. And, and you didn't think that when I left to go adventuring around the world that that you would have told me that Tam isn't my dad? Well, I mean, I did kind of put in the time. I think you hear him say, <laughs> she just like looks at him, like turning back, like, um, look, I was waiting for the right time. We tried to give you a good life. We tried to raise you well. You gave me a great you. life. I'm not trying to say that you didn't, but... So you're not the only one who made mistakes. He... He was looking for dangerous things. He was turning over rocks that have been left in place for a long time. And scary creatures get kicked up when you do that for long enough. I know. Did you know that we fought like an army of shadow dragons? Yes. Uh, I did know that. I heard I the just... song and I was very excited to sit down and talk about it over pancakes with you in Homeworld before it was attacked. Okay. Oh. So yes, I get it. You've been turning over old stones. You fought a disgusting abomination of a Long dead dragon that was all slime and decaying disgustingness, and I've Wait, met you like the dragon. Tam says, "Did you, I mean? I guess you just said you fought it. Did you run away? No, we've killed lots of dragons. You've killed lots of dragons. Yeah, my girl. I think he like turns around looking at the top. Okay, it's like, can you even? I think like Faye like slaps him. Like he's like, <gasps> I'm so. I'm just, that's very impressive. Lots this of will dragons. do very well for you in the speaker election. And I think Faye is like, um, I have not seen Zevox in many years. I knew that he would be on Homeworld. We hope to talk about his plans. 
Why why was he walking around like That's what they do. That's Why they're... didn't he did he know? Mom <laughs> It's like twist <laughs> What the fuck? And I think I think Reg is I think Reg is like um if I if I could there is a lot of history to be unwound I do have an awareness that there is some present danger I'm not certain that's even the brick proper word but can you take us to the mind witness please yes you will speak with dawn and he will read your minds to sense if you bring menace malice or deception into our home you oh. have spilled the blood of our speaker upon our stones but we are a merciful that... just uh, one one absolutely we shall bear witness to dawn uh, I just want it to be known to all here in the room and those who are listening in the other chambers. We didn't know that we 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 were duped in a way, both <laughs> both by <laughs> foul magical object and, with all due respect, decades worth of falsehoods. <laughs> so one can understand that we are a bit flummoxed by the entire situation. Lux, there will be time for reckoning, reconciliation, and uh, a sort of je ne sais quoi around uh, what to do with the cadras of it all, but I just think it is important to know that no ill will was brought about by us. At least those of us in the room. We Correct? do not understand some of those words, give Q, but it was told to us by Zivox that you were people of great import. Oh. That one holds the secret of her dead uncle, which she does not know. It points at Doc, and I think it says, <laughs> and you others already have made waves in the great ocean of stars. He believed you to be of importance and wished to call you for audience. And so we will share our minds with He Dawn. could have sent a letter. Really, what this is up with the communication in this freaking world? All discussed on our journey home <sighs> after your world was attacked by the undead mind flayer in the sky. Mm -hmm. Look, I... I... I, I, it feels an apology is due. I am not certain to whom, from whom, quite yet. Perhaps a cadre of apologies, and there will be time for that. Can we is talk now... about why the ship was was a mimic ship, though? Well, you are very imagine. fortunate that the bluebell is not here, or certainly would have consumed you with the voracious vengeance for the death of Zivox. They it? were very close. It is my understanding that uh, the, the folks of this background, uh, it is not uncommon to have a, a mimic ship. Uh, I'm not talking the... about the bluebell. Oh. Well, no, we're well, talking well. about the Ilthalids, correct? Yes. Our oh, people. yes, I had forgotten about that. Our people, the shifting thread, take many jobs. Some serve this undying Ilthalid. They have chosen to throw their lot in with him. It was this which led Zivox to speak of straws and camels. This choice driving him to action after years of consideration. He sought to find a homeland and succor underneath the one called the Havana. That is why we were at the home world when he attacked. So Yavanna knew about all this too? I am but one. 
I am called Eros, and I know not what your leader says or knows. Okay, fair, I know fair only enough, what Zivax has told me. I'm just, I'm not in a good spot right now, so I'm sorry if I am a little... Who is on this day of pain? I'm doing okay. Well, that is fortunate. Do the rest of you require refreshment? We make a very bitter lemonade. Ooh. I could use a, a beverage, honestly. Would you like the bitter lemonade? Yeah. I imagine that is probably the only option, is it not? No. Oh. We also make a very minty iced tea. Minty? Hmm. I can't really taste the difference between bitter and mint, but mint is a more fun word, so mint for me. You would like the uh, color, too. It is green. <laughs> I will simply observe and ensure that either is poisoned. Thank you. It's okay, Papa. I cannot be poisoned. No! <laughs> Their deceptions will be exposed. Pours you lemonade and iced tea, and he puts it down on the table. Just like <laughs> big blue faceless kind of doppelganger of a person. I have such a headache from going to like laughing as Taylor to like just emotionally <laughs> <laughs> agonize uh, this life. Uh, if, if I'm, uh, I, I am open. Suggested course of action. Simply a suggestion, hmm. Doc. Perhaps you would remain here and study what could be learned from this room and the others here. And and I think he like gives the eyes, which is just basically like ensure that they don't kill us while we go down below. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Player characterize. Yep. And and then uh, and then I, I think he turns to Lux and Adam and it's like. I think it's time we have a conversation with Dawn. Exciting. <laughs> and so I think that with that, uh, the doppelgangers, like, having, having brought you some drinks... Uh, they proceed to like kind of scatter out around the shroom. It's like Doc is seemingly kind of talking to one of them. Um, hold on one second. Just bear with me here. And as you guys, they basically like lead you out the back, uh, out the little like kind of side door that goes out onto the ledge. And you go walking around the kind of like exterior edge for a little bit until you... Um, you, you come down around the side and you see there's like a ladder coming down the actual like side of the island over near one of the banks and then a hallway that leads up underneath the fortress. And as you, you uh, climb down this little ladder outside and start heading into the hallway, you find yourself in this natural kind of tunnel making your way into the lower levels of this fort. Um, like heading through the kind of twisting passage, the ground is all like soil, the walls all like earth and soil, some support struts like mounted over the tops of the kind of caverns to shore up some of the loose places. Um, you see, you feel like the breeze kind of pulling through. There's a couple of like benches situated in here, but as you, you come around the corner, you hear the sound of like a group of people, I think, before you even see them um and coming around the corner there are literally about half a dozen people um and they're all like down on their knees kind of like surrounding this large creature that is dominating the center of this room uh soil floor all kinds of like crates and barrels like filling up the space a hallway leading out the other side of the room these folks are down on their knees and levitating up above them is this massive maybe like 300 pound pink fleshy aberration of a creation uh here i will do one of these yes yes yes, yes. show it 
Uh, it has a series of eye stalks <laughs> kind of twisting off of its body. Its skin, this like smooth kind of glimmering pink. It's got a sheen on it, almost like slug slime. Each of the eyes at the end of like the tentacles, just these like pale white orbs, pupilless, much like the doppelgangers themselves. And then the eye in the center of its head, also like this mirror white, milky, like smooth, pupilless kind of eye with the tentacles on the lower half of its body not holding eyes and so this thing is just kind of like levitating in the middle of the room the tentacles moving like ever so lightly and on the ground you see a half a dozen people all on their knees uh they're like hands kind of folded in their laps their eyes closed and i think that you three specifically uh to varying degrees might recognize them as some of the refugees from Homeworld that um, like scattered onto the ship with Lux's parents, as it were. Uh, and so like with Tam and Faye kind of like leading you down here, uh, as you all emerge into this room, I'll ask, what do you guys want to do? Can I um, roll back one little thing? Yeah, which please. Is like, yep. I, I think I can briefly speak for Melissa uh, that does Doc have protection from good and evil in her spells? Ooh, because if yeah. she does and she has any slots left, I have to imagine she would have at least cast that on Lux. She already did. She already her. did. Okay. Yeah. So that's either like still running or would be re-upped because I think that's a 10 minute spell. It's but an that hour, just... I think. It's an, oh, it's an hour? Then we're, I feel like we should be. Her, Pretty sure her. protection of evil goes an hour. <laughs> up to 10 no, minutes. It's just 10 minutes i don't know i thought it was an hour so yeah. the first one would have burned off but she'll cast it again on you before you come down here for yeah, sure yeah i mean i don't want to like you know dmpc nope. this oh, no, one too much like, nope, nope, was... nope. but i feel like yeah. she would she would have done that i uh, think she's super here for it there are a couple of doppelgangers in the room too like sitting on barrels and crates on the side of the room just kind of like watching um and so as you all emerge in the three of you with tam and Faye and like a pair of doppelgangers with you uh yeah is there anything you guys want to do or any like oh, kind yeah. of conversation you all are yeah, oh, yeah. adam is immediately running up to the tank like a kid at a touch tank he is <laughs> wanting to check out this thing up close and personal as close oh, as it can be considering it is hovering in the air it is in no tank my small friend so as you come like i think you dart between like lux and uh and reg like it come like racing up to it its tentacles kind of like hang it's only a couple of feet off the ground uh you had just had a really recent height increase like you definitely could reach out and touch one of the tentacles if you want he's gonna Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh well, uh, Professor Lux, are you guys doing anything as Adam darts away? Um, I think that Lux is um, one of Lux's like favorite enemies is aberrations. So I oh, think boy. I think that she uh, like is seeing this thing, like recognizing it from recognizing the type of creature from when they first encountered one. Um, and I think she's just trying to recall any information on it. In like as her kind of brain is in like survival mode right now. Um, uh, yeah, very fair. The things that you know about it is that it does like act as like a kind of telepathic hub. It does have a bunch of eye rays, telekinesis, a stunning ray, a slowing ray, psychic blast, fear, and then like an aversion ray, one that just makes you literally like run away from it. Um, they're not like the most like aggressive or dangerous compared to true beholders that can like disintegrate and death ray your ass right mm -hmm. um they're much more like a utilitarian kind of like a uh, cog in the machine of like the Ilthalid uh mind hive right mm -hmm. so i think adam as you dart forward and kind of reach out one of the tentacles like reaches down and i think it's like this really like magnificent scene that's a little bit like gross and slimy like an elephant's trunk reaching out for like a little kid's hand you know what i mean <laughs> it's like the slimy tentacle makes contact with your metal fingers and begins to like wind itself around like your arm and your hand this is incredible this is the most disgusting thing i've ever encountered <laughs> i adore it papa i think Ben's just like nods and uh I, I, he's just collecting information with his eyes 
And I think in that moment, Adam, you feel your mind like shifting all of a sudden as you have a very clear sense of yourself. You feel yourself in your body, your feet on like the moist soil of the cave, the kind of like scent of like this, this, the wet dirt around you, um, the sound of like the people breathing in the room, right? The jangling of like Lux and then Reggie's equipment moving behind you. But you feel your mind like unmoor from your body. And you are suddenly like you feel these other people that are all here. You feel uh, went the shopkeeper who like sells fishing tackle in Harbor Town on Homeworld. Uh, you feel like the twin brothers of Mock and Mirth that like ran through the town square that day as these slimes came like plummeting off of like the ship from the sky. You feel like their relief at getting onto the bluebell at like lifting off the planet knowing they would like survive this attack uh you feel like the the kind of like memories of like the half elf that is there with you as he's like thinking back towards like when he was young and he traveled here to Eston's rest with his brother uh you feel like the curiosity of the halfling woman next to you as like she wonders if her uncle like still lives here in Eston's rest and like you you feel all of these like minds all of the their their, like memories their emotions kind of like crashing into you this collective sense of relief from all of them at like this transcendent kind of like unifying experience that they're all sharing and then i think you just hear this voice in your mind adam of like well met you are new but old yes i am adam do you dream? Yes, I dream others' dreams, though. I have wondered if I can have those of my own, or I merely imagine the dreams of those whose minds have touched me. Well, I had you in about the second to last sentence, and then you kind of st staved off there. But yes, same, on the same page. How are you able to... To, to read minds, to think what others think. I can't even imagine. Papa has only taught me about the barest of magic. This seems to be digging into wells upon wells of deep in lore. My abilities are not magic. They are psionic. A minor distinction to those who do not practice, but I do this for I was forged for it. I sense you too were forged. We are vibing so much right now. Yes, I was created by my papa to carry out evil deeds. And boy, did I until I recently had a change of heart upon his death. And I've come upon my new family. Have you a family of your own? Yes, I too was created not by a papa, but by a hive mind of illithids. As a weapon, I too a tool, a, s a slave to be used in their violent conquests. But now I have family. I have lost today, though. I mourn for the one called Zevox. He had a aspiring soul. He dreamed great things for many people. Well, we, of course, are sorry for your loss, um, mostly because we were the ones that caused said loss. Just a heads up, I'm not entirely sure how this process is going to go. I know me and my crew are able to be judged before you. I'm not sure if it's as simple as you take one look at us and give the old proverbial thumbs up or thumbs down upon the many tentacles that you have. Just know that Lux has a great heart. She too seemed to be someone much like ourselves that was created, divine for a greater purpose. That led her to pursue paths that were less than ideal, to take opportunities that have led her to take very, very grave decisions and lives. But as I have been learning, to err is human. And though neither you or I are 
human. It is something I admire about them. Their abilities to act upon ways they think they are doing well, but are not. It's a complicated mechanism. The idea of morality, of good and evil, and trying to do something for good, and it not being so. They are merely human. They are not like us. Perfect machines made for greater purposes. I do ask that you lend a kind eye, perhaps your lone eye, to them as you cast upon your vast judgment. And I think it's just responding back to you like, um, I have met many souls, but you intrigue me. Your wisdom is childlike, and you need not mourn. And I think, Lux, you f hear this voice reach into your mind like, um, well met. I sense you are in terrible pain and turmoil. Um, hi. Are you Dawn? I am that. Well, that is what they call me. Did, did you know that you could have whatever name you want in space? I did not, but now I will. Do you approve of your name? The name given by those who raised you? I think so. I'll have to think about it, I guess, because... I don't know. I'm... I'm sorry. Your yeah. regret is overwhelming. You need not hold so tightly to this pain. I... <laughs> might take me a minute. I'm tired, and I just killed my dad, who I didn't even know. Yes, so. I know. It is a true tragedy. I have known many, many pains. Each soul who has touched mine carries their own, you see. But you need not mourn, as life was one well lived. So long as I endure, some part of him will as well. Would you wish to see? Or is see? this a burden that you do not wish? No, I want to see. And I think that I, uh, you feel this like shifting space. You also looks like having the same sensation. Like you very much like are still connected and tethered to your body. It's not like the aspect of like Kadras pushing you to the back of your mind, but um, you you have this like sight of like Zvox literally like walking up to this place, uh, and he he is in this like gnomish body of Dr. Laman Lanalaman with like a group of others behind him, this motley assortment of like humans and fear bulgs, elves and dwarves, uh, dragonborn and tabaxi, and all of them kind of like slowly shifting as like Zvox is like gesturing out of this like very little fortress that you're at right now. And he's saying to them all like, um, in this place, we will have a home. We will be able to make for ourselves a new path. Uh, and then I think that you see like this flashing of memories of like him, like working on the place with all of these other doppelgangers. I think you see faces of some of the people who your parents like helped over the years. Um, and I think that you like see them like with Zvox sitting at the table upstairs, like breaking bread with them, uh, like traveling on the ships. I think you see Zvox at like the helm of like a spell jammer in the like deep reaches of space. Space, looking at like the uh, schools of Kindori whales and like this screaming comet racing across the sky. And then finally, I think you see Zvox like standing in front of a lake and there's a shadow cast over him, the moon up in the sky holding. And uh, the shadow is in the shape of like the silhouette of a giant humanoid looming over him. And you hear this like booming voice. Um, you return. This is good. I have 
a clue. Perhaps you can find the end of it. And Zivox, like, nodding back, as you see, and he says, um, my people were frightened for me to come here. The legend of the Meldrus travels far on Eston's rest. There are those who believe you a terrible spirit, protector of these dark, forbidden places. And then I think that, like, uh, you hear the voice again in your mind, Lux, like, um, that was more than I intended, but he felt much joy. He shared it, and he forged a path better for those who will walk now that he has gone. Learn from your choice, but do not let the lament overtake you. Okay. I think that Reginald, you as well hear this voice of like, well, Matt, you are very full. The weavings of your arcanum make your mind a maze for me. Yes. And you have simply arrived at the moat that surrounds the maze of my mind. Protection is very important to you. You have kept them very safe, but you cannot protect them from themselves, can you? Perhaps not. And what of you? What or whom do you protect? I protect the idea of the future, the hope that one thing forged for a job may in fact perform another in its time. I sense your mistrust you have crossed my kind in battle. Mm, perhaps. The Illithids are evil, unrelenting, but we are merely a tool in their arsenal. I have no malice. It is not a concept I can hold on to. And malice I ascribe you not, of course. It is simply the case that in unfamiliar places with unfamiliar creatures, I am left to be more conservative. They struggled. They are together, but each alone. This shifting thread hiding in plain sight across the stars. This one, when he found me, and they joined their minds through this bond, they chose something different. There are gods worshipped on this world, concepts ascribed to the stars. I cannot say if these are real beings or merely ideas, but Zivok seized hold of them. They became a moral compass, a guiding light. He sought to restore hope for those who live hopeless amongst this shifting nation of his people. He would not have them serve unjust masters like the one which you have battled. It seems as though you seem willing and capable to assist those in their pursuits and perhaps desires, should it be for good? I will try. 
So long as they come, I will teach them to see one another, to know their, each other's truths. Through this act, barriers are diminished. Solidarity is encouraged. But you know well, judgment. We are not well received by many at a surface glance. A home is no easy place to find. This much is certainly true. You must be wise enough to know the reasons why I cannot remove all of the walls and ramparts that separate our minds at the moment. But I can and will briefly share something with you in hopes that it may lead to a better outcome. And I think with that, like, Reg will release in his mind the images of that he has in his memory of Kadras <gasps> and Lux and uh, his own interworkings around what it would take in order to, Im as quickly as possible, though knowing that that may not be possible, but just like this is now his current enigma um, and is inviting uh, help and speculation from Dawn. Yeah, and I think that um, the response that you get back is like confusing. Some tools have intent of their own, separate from their wielders. Unusual. But it's, I know not how to sever this bond, but if I were to point to one, the smell drews up the rust flow was a being of notable power. Zivok said that he has strong ties with the workings of the druidic circles of this world. Perhaps an answer there if you seek one with haste. Beyond that, you may pray to the gods of the stars or whisper to the keepers of the twilight. And perhaps they will answer. And I think ever so briefly, Dawn will almost, as if an image is attempted to remain within, but is released uh, against Reg's will of a very young Reginald basically saying to his parents, I don't believe in the gods. They've never answered my prayers before, and they're not going to answer again. And for the rest of my days, I will not believe and I will not pray to them. And it's just this like thought that is that, that he cannot keep contained. Uh, let me ask, do, do you like, do you, do you think that that like reaches your friends? Yeah. I was going to say, how much of this is a party line? Like how much yeah. are you listening in on this? I think that there is a little bit of like, at the longer this goes, it's starting to like bleed out, right? Mm -hmm. Where like all of you are like, imagine any room around a table with like dinner conversation happening. Mm -hmm. And like the one to one, and like amidst the kind of din of like the rest of these conversations, like the, the one conversation is starting to like crystallize a little bit. You're zoning in and like dimming out the noise, right? As you're catching the rest of this. Yeah. Yeah, certainly that last piece. I don't know how much of the uh, earlier bits, right? Like people may were maybe so were tuned to. Definitely, like uh, Adam and Lux, like the pair of you would at least connect with this. Of like, um, you know, I think it's the the voice of of Dawn is like saying to all of you, like, um, my role with these people 
is merely to help them overcome the barriers of language, of teaching, and of prejudice. I do not know how to unmake this bond with the tool and the archer, but there are those in this world who may have those answers. One such is this figure of the forest. I do think that Lux is like, uh, after seeing like the visions of Zvox, I think she uh, has like fallen to her knees in this room and is like silently sobbing, but like trying to listen to the conversation and like is trying to keep it together. But she, yeah, I think she's just like actively like sobbing on the ground a little bit. Your friend requires rest. So did we pass? We were told that we'd be judged. Is, and I is think over? You, you hear the voice of one of the doppelgangers amidst like, um, you bear no hatred. Zvox would give you welcome. We shall as well. We regret his loss, but understand the circumstance. We are not pleased, but we do not pursue revenge, or none would have lived as long as we have. You may rest as you see fit. Well, I guess I'll, I'll be the one to speak on behalf of our group. Uh, thank you. Uh, this was lovely, delightful. I mean, I, I listen, I, I'd love to stay and chat about this psionics. Is that what you said? I know I've uh, sort of been on the slow path towards learning magic, but psionics. Now this, this sounds interesting. You can read into people's dreams. This is every one of, for lack of a better term, my own dreams coming true. Ah, I might have to genuflect at the altar of dawn myself, much like my compatriots have. I am very pleased to have melded with you, Adam. You are a very unique individual and will linger in my mind. Likewise, is it too forward if I call you my best friend? <laughs> 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 I think you, I think as Boy, the tentacles get it as the tentacles are like working their way over Adam's little metal shoulders, like I think it lifts you up off the ground, like, holding in front of its eye, like the other eye stalks coming down around. Like, please, I quite enjoy that. This makes me very happy. I, uh, likewise, ah, oh, this is one of the happiest moments I've ever had in my entire life. Thank you. Thank you. I know one of Papa's odd childhood memories, and now I have a best friend. Oh, it looks like this day was not so bad after all, aside from the leader that we killed. Oh. <laughs> you hear Taya behind you. Ooh. <laughs> they think like Dawn putting Adam down on the ground. I think that you do hear. I think all three of you actually would hear this if I come. Um, I have been trying to extend my reach. Perhaps as you depart from this place, I will try to maintain a connection to you across the distance. Is that I, agreeable? I think immediately, like, another thought <laughs> emanates from Reg's brain. And this one maybe with, like, oh, I don't know how. But, I like, this notion just flies through. That it's just, like, and he give Q? Like, literally, he's, like, searching the, like, Rolodex of Dawn's brain. Of, like, you got, you got any give Q in there? And I think that there is a point of, like... Others of your kind have been here, Reginald. May I call you that, or do you prefer Professor? 
It's complicated. Refer to me however you wish. Biologists. One such was brought here, separated from her party. She was found in the forest by Zevox's associates. She but, stayed for some ten days with us. Oh. Goodness, give Q biologist exploring the stars. It is deeply uncommon. It is not uncommon to have a, a learned, uh, 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 some sort of other teacher or faculty of the gift cube, but they are off, quite often stationed at the various centers of learning that we provide to have one adventuring is quite rare. Oh. Harriet you... Chambers was her name. Her companions unknown to me, but in her time here, I came to appreciate her intellect and curiosity. It is bred from an early age. Harriet Chambers. Hmm. Well then. Well, shall we sleep? Yes, yes, that's all. This is all. Well, I don't know if I can sleep after the day that I've had, but gladly I will be happy to look over a resting Lux in case any other calamity shall befall her. If you do not need to rest, I could simulate the dreams I have experienced for you. I love this best, best friendship already. Dawn, do your stuff. <laughs> I think that I'll like there's arms <laughs> wide. <laughs> As Adam like holds his arms up. I think there's this point where like suddenly Adam, you have this sensation of like you're up on a stage naked talking to everybody that you know. And then there's a sensation of like, wait, no. Uh, and then you're flying through the class. <laughs> <laughs> she just like whoo, soaring uh, and then it proceeds to like roll into like a sequence of like just incredible events where like you crash into a cloud but the cloud sticks to you and becomes an incredible ball gown and you're dancing with the prince and I just say like in day. my head <laughs> the background music is literally breaking free from high school musical yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why that came in my head, but were they like busting through the clouds? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think that, like, ultimately, Lux and Reginald, like, Tam and Faye will, like, lead you back up and offer you a couple of, like, the cots, right? These, like, beds in the main room. They do tell you that, like, you could go to one of the other rooms if you preferred. Um, or, like, you're welcome to, like, sleep outside or go sleep on your boat. But they offer you up the beds as, like, the doppelgangers seem, like, busy. Uh, also, like, a few of them, you see, start coming out of, like, the back chamber. And they're carrying, like, these bricks. And and then one of them has like literally like a, a, a container kind of over its shoulders as it's like heading towards the upstairs. And inside of it is this bright blue kind of like slime, it looks like, uh, that it's like carrying <laughs> up to the upper floors of like, um, we will replace the mason work. And the other one's like, yes. Uh, so, yeah, you guys can, like, stop and take a long rest if you want. Adam, ultimately, over the course of, like, the next six hours, uh, Dawn, like, brings you on a sequence of, like, the greatest hits list of, like, a hundred <laughs> different people's dreams. You know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> You're, like, climbing mountains. You're a pirate captain. You got a puppy. It's Christmas Day. You know what I mean? Oh, like, there's, like, this sequence of, like, events happening. <laughs> You're like in your first dress, you know, like all this kind of stuff. You're like, learn, you know, dad, like let you take the boat out on your own to go fishing for the first day. It's just like uh, uh, things you could imagine and then things you couldn't. But it is this like mm. onslaught of experiences that ultimately like Dawn is like reliving these other people's dreams for you. Yeah, I think the yeah. entire time Adam is trying to compartmentalize as much as he can in his very simple head to like remember 
these experiences so he doesn't have to learn as much because he has gleaned far more about the concept of behavior over the course of peeping in on a montage of dreams than he has in six or so months aboard the dragonfly. Let me have you also make an insight check here, Adam. Oh. Um, amidst this series of dreams, there are peppered in all of these little discussions and conversations about the stars. That's a natural 20. <laughs> yes! Yes! <laughs> you, sir, um, in the midst of all of this, you're finding this like connectivity of this idea that there's like this religion that these doppelgangers living in this place have adopted. It's pretty common here to Eston's Rest about like these nine central gods that are ascribed to like certain stars. Some of them are like so are literal suns, the, the suns of many planets obviously are stars, but there are all these like ideas, right? These like these loose kind of concepts, the bigger and more important kind of like note as you're beginning to extrapolate all of this is that, um, that this belief system, this whole like religion and belief about the gods, like at its fundamental ten, uh, precept is that within each of the stars is a portal to another plane of existence and that the various stars like shine in these various colors and hues because they're opening to like different realities that the, the light and the energy that's pouring out of them is literally like the light and the energy of other worlds seeping into this. And most importantly, I think you extrapolate that these, this religion has gained like a fervor pitch in Aston's rest in the last hundred years because the moon exploded, uh, the sun of Aston's rest began to change and to shift and, and academics, philosophers, astronomers were like the moon, the, the moon, uh, the sun is dying. That's like what they came to on Aston's rest. And over the course of this process, it like destroyed the moon, uh, like over the next like kind of 20 years after this was discovered, the moon through its natural course of like rotations through the sun's light in the midst of it being cast into the sun's light at one point, it exploded. And this whole band around the world from space is what the moon used to be. But that ultimately it is now like concrete and confirmed that the sun of this world is dying. And that within the next like hundred years, uh, like life on this planet will not be as sustainable as it is because it's diminishing in power. Okay, well now the day I know worse, that's a lot. much worse for Adam. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's a lot, but like you're like extrapolating that out of like the 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 kind of like uh, the underside of like the what you're getting from the dreams, right? Like mm. the kind of like panicked feelings that these dreams are quelling and subsuming and like overcoming in these sleepers is about the fact that like, oh shit, our sun is dying and it did blow the moon up. <laughs> I mean, I think Adam would sort of like instinctively not turn to Dawn because he is sort of like doing this mild male yeah. experience with Dawn, but I think he would try to refer to him call out to him and say are you aware of this very gloomy forecast on the horizon yes this is why zivox sought refuge on homeworld the people of Eston's rest are counting days though most do not know so just to make things crystal clear your people attempted to take refuge for the fact that the end of days is soon to come due to a moon exploding. They were then set upon by a bunch of goo people and decided to come back to where they came from, which is, again, in an end of day scenario. And said leader also happened to no longer be alive. Those are all mostly true, yes. Uh, this crew run the bluebell this is how they gather information people allies and resources 
At any given time, the Bluebell sails for one of the trade guilds out of hope. Zivox was the captain of this organization. There are always some of them here. This is their lodge, but it is no true home, and they do not feel that they can make homes amongst the citizenry of this world. There's a great mistrust of dragons here due to a turning of an age before. Their role as shapeshifters makes it difficult for them to integrate in this place, in most places. What they sought is more than walls or a roof, but a leader who would accept them and stand for them and make them officially part of something that is not the shifting thread. Tell me about this election for a speaker. I am quite excited for the prospect. Must one of the changelings be elected? Is there a process, a formal vote? How does this occur? We will choose collectively. Each will put forth their ideas and priorities. Now that Zivox is gone, we will pursue his goals with different tactics. The one whom others agree to follow will lead. Well, I couldn't help but notice there are quite a number of people that are following you in a manner of speaking. Have you ever thought about volunteering yourself? Take a little jab at politics? I am troubled by this as I speak to you now with our newfound confidentiality and loyalty. I have considered this, but I fear I must preserve my humility to facilitate my role amongst them best. Ah, yes. Don't shit where you eat. That's what my before papa taught me. <laughs> that is a strange sensation. As it is, I, I, I was right not designed that. to shit. Yes, hey, <laughs> I'm now, sorry. Is, but... I, I didn't quite understand the phrase. Uh, I've only recently come into the second part of the phrase. The first is still a mystery to me, but I, I do understand that it feels fairly applicable here. Flesh and steel... And yet, we are truly cut from the same cloth. Uh, and I'm sorry, Reg, what were you trying to say there? No, I was just saying I think Reg agrees with the... Uh, I think his current papa would agree, don't shit where you eat. Uh, <laughs> it, I, I, at some point off screen, uh, we're going to reveal that fact later on, that Reg and, and, and Reg agrees. That's good. That, that is sound advice. Yeah, the one thing that he agrees yeah. with. Mm -hmm. Ultimately... Lux and Reginald, you guys can get a long rest, should you so choose. I think that Doc spends the evening talking with doppelgangers and changelings, watching over you, like keeping watch, waffle, kind of monitoring as Adam, like stands at alert, dreaming other people's dreams in the basement. Uh, Naya, uh, I'm sorry, Nira, Nira did not successfully overturn the boat. It's not my fault. Kevin did it. Uh, I try. How many names do I have to remember for this guy? The <laughs> 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 you know only characters I got across these games. Uh, I love you, Kevin. I miss you, man. You're never going to watch this. So. <laughs> um, so Nira did not successfully overturn Ben's boat, though Ben got very persnickety about all the rocking. But nonetheless, oh. Nira and Ben and Kadras all just hanging out kumbaya on the boat, oh, which has a cabin. So they're inside living up the good life. Um, yeah. Ultimately, you guys uh, can long rest. You get one level of exhaustion done, Lux. I don't know how many you had, if you had any. I you didn't. made all your saves. I did make all my saves, so I didn't have any. Can I Can I just go back to slightly before Please, we go to sleep? Absolutely can. And I, it's, like, really simple, unless she makes it not. But I think that, like, Reg would just, like, get in one of the cots or, like, sit in one of the cots next to... First of all, there's some real checking of the integrity of that cot before Reg sits down. <laughs> so, okay. so also let me, like, preface this. Like, Lux goes up back to the top of, like, the, the, the fortress and, like, is up there for 
a significant amount of time before she like finds any sort of rest. Well then, I think Reg goes back up to the top as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and I think, like, I think we get out there. It's probably evening. Uh, and like, I think he just kind of like slowly approaches her from behind in not a very stealthy way. And, like stands maybe a little bit out of her view and waits for her to recognize that he's there because he knows that she knows that he's there. I think she like sniffs and like wipes at her eyes and then like does the like she doesn't look but she like does the head tilt like come on like come over. And I think you just like feel an arm over your shoulder and just like pull you in to just like a warm, soft, pudgy embrace Aww. with a little bit of tweed. Yeah, I think Lux <laughs> has had Which an is end a great end. description of Reginald. <laughs> Long, pudgy hug with a little bit a of tweed. A warm, soft, pudgy <laughs> embrace with a little bit of <laughs> tweed. Of tweed. Um, yeah, I think Lux has been sort of sitting, pondering, and like just uh, can't help but stop or can't stop thinking about the memories of Z-Vox and like now less so is important that like he might have been her real dad but the thing that's more painful is taking this very important person away from people who really knew him and everything that he was doing for them and yeah i think when like reggie gives her a hug she just kind of like wraps her arms around him as much as she can and just like starts really crying but oh she doesn't fall asleep she cries it out upstairs so mm -hmm. there's uh like the heavy and then like is the like the cut the like fade away into the pair of you inside and the cots later like laying yourselves down to go to bed yeah i guess so there and were rooms yeah, there's like one big common room kind of, and then or they could like put you up somewhere else. Now then yeah, Lux will just like collapse in one of the cots. So dare I say, but um I think that as like Adam is down in the basement having this revelation of like, oh my gosh, wait, the world is exploding. Uh and Lux and Reginald are down in the in the kind of like central room, um, about to like get some rest. The locks like the sleep falls over you, the exhaustion washing away from your body. And I think that as Adam dreams of like wearing, uh, you know, other people's prom dresses and flying through the stars, I think that Lux, you dream of like your childhood, the early days on the ships, of like playing with Doc the first time that Tam and Faye went to Homeworld and like took her with you on your journeys through the stars. And then I think that um, in like the, the late hours of the night, just before like you rise for the morning, you see the gleaming face, the red eyes, the little razor white sharp teeth against a field of blackness. Like you can cast me aside, but you bear me with you wherever you go now, Oathmaker. And that's where we'll leave our adventurers today. Oh! <laughs> I hope this was at least enjoyable. <laughs> oh, yeah. This was so was much fun. fun. Oh, my God. So dramatic. <laughs> Perfect. The drama. Uh, thank oh, you, my Taylor, God. For, yeah, seriously, yeah. Taylor, for, for swinging with all those pitches. Uh, thank you guys for hanging out. This was really fun for me. This was a good one. I hope it was like at least enjoyable and not too like talky talky, like, uh, you know, yeah, lore drop position. Got it uh, all. So I'm quite happy. Reg, I'd like to roll something. I know we just, I know we just clicked. Yeah, go ahead. Yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can but roll. I just, I want to roll a, a little bit of a wisdom save. And this is really my check to see if Reg is able to fall asleep. Uh, Why? Because he's like so scared shitless about everything that's happened. I mean, I think that like, like th that cut is like exactly where it ends.
but maybe there's just like a brief like moment of like Reg laying on the cot with his hand and his eyes and he's just like <laughs> fuck, <laughs> fuck, fuck yeah fuck, yeah fuck, <laughs> fuck. Uh, oh my god and it definitely with a seven there's some like oh, impaired god. ability to sleep I love the notion that like Lux collapses in exhaustion only to be like woken up by nightmares of like the magic trauma that she's imbued about herself. Adam is like uh, vicariously living through other people's dreams while not sleeping at all. And Reginald is just yeah. laying in bed going through like crisis resolution. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, oh, God. oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. You like so badly need your big brain partner and crime doc here to like fear yeah. crap. <laughs> like, oh man. <laughs> And then, like, Ben and, and uh, Nier are, like, Bring hanging out with the bow playing checkers. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, holding it is, a little bow. It is a, <laughs> the mental equivalent. You know those puzzles that are, like, the metal pieces that are, like, where you just, like, fidget with them? Like, the it black is puzzles, very, yeah. where it's just, like, <laughs> Um, I oh hope that was God. satisfying for you guys. Yeah, that <laughs> was like much. really interesting stuff. I didn't know how like deep we dig in everything. We didn't even get into it. I hope that wasn't too traumatic for you, Taylor. I really it's agonized crazy. about this one a lot it's so because funny. there was like the world where like originally I had conceptualized Zvox as like potentially somebody from Doc's past. Yes. But then I was like, this is too effed up and traumatic to like, <laughs> Melissa didn't opt into this. So like, I'm not going to put that, that trauma on her plate you know yeah but you yeah, yeah. on the other hand gave me a dad <laughs> named tam and i just was like i oh, did yeah. give you a dad named tam i did it i should have like just I, I feel like in the beginning i really thought about it we've been playing for long enough that like all those like ideas that i had in the very beginning are just like you know ingrained in like everything else that we've done and I just totally didn't think about it until, yeah, Brenna, like, reminded me. Of yeah, I hope like, it's okay course. that I've just, like, messed with your whole genealogy. And yeah, that's yeah. amazing. Yeah. I mean, yeah. hey, I'm descended from, like, space Jesus, so that's fun. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> Damn school. Uh, maybe he'll you rise tried. again in three days. We don't know. <laughs> I love that Cam is, like, Cam is, like, uh, I hated him. Yes. <laughs> By the way, load off my back. Wow, yeah, so man. Abby's finally gone. Hey, Listen, thanks, there's man. good news for one of us today. <laughs> um, cool. Well, that was super, super fun. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure that Doc would love that. Melissa, when you watch this back, uh, I hope I made appropriate Doc choices. I'm sorry if she was too mean. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I've been uh, live updating Melissa and Kevin because they both asked uh, me oh, to good. keep oh, them updated. So, uh, I'm excited to see yeah. the future adventures of Nira and Kadras. <laughs> yeah, dude. I Kevin can't just wait. accumulates evil weaponry. Hey, don't worry about it. I totally double bonded your bow, so you're probably good now. <laughs> <laughs> double bonded the bow. That's, That's what Nira was going to say when, when they're back next week. Um, so, yeah. We will get off the freaking internet. Uh, anything exciting you got going on, Mike? What are you going got doing in the world that people yeah. should be paying attention to? I'm doing a lot of ish. Uh, the things I'll say is like, hey, if you like freaky, fun, weird shit out there in the realm of television, there's a lot of fun stuff happening. Mrs. Davis is concluding on Peacock and Silo on Apple TV Plus is getting started. Troy is a huge fan of Silo. He's He's cleaning. He's like, if you get, if you know, it's an inside joke from the show. You would understand. Uh, but it's those are both not so really, much of a spoiler. It's okay. Yeah, but they're they're both really well done shows of completely different qualities, but still I enjoy them all the same. So I'm I'm covering that mainly on Pusher Recap. So yeah, if you're looking for more like sci-fi adjacent shenanigans to be happening on your TV screen, couldn't recommend those two shows more. Very cool. Uh, how about you, Trey? Anything you want to hype up out there? I mean, I'm going to hype up Silo. Uh, you know, it's science high. Uh, well, well, it's science low, so it is Silo. Mm. But, it's science uh, low. It's science fiction, but, but, but minimal on the science. Um, uh, yeah, I'm enjoying that show. Um, uh, what else do I want to hype up? Uh, boy, it, th this is my like new obsession recently is the TV show Couples Therapy. On yeah, Showtime. I saw you talking about I've it. I've been hyping about this in, in the Discord, but uh wow uh just really fascinated by that and let's see here any other good recommendations nope that's it we'll just leave it at that and uh come watch us play D, &D again next time yeah how about you taylor uh yeah i got another good recommendation go watch willow go oh! watch willow what is this 
Willow. No, I'm playing. I'm playing. I'm playing. Oh, I'm I know the for Willow real, of dude? it all. Did you somehow <laughs> run the gauntlet of the last eight months with? Yeah, are you two kidding me? I jumped off at did every did? point in time before Taylor had to do her. Plan. I was like completely floored for a second. You really got me there. <laughs> no, I, I was like, that how is this possible, second. dude? No. Oh Look, my god, that's not normally my type of humor, but you know. Well, then I was like recalibrating to be like, how do I sell Troy on this like really quickly? Like, what's wow. the Troy? That's I impressive that what? you are that much of a Willow <laughs> stan. Uh, I am, uh, dude. I think it was like one of my favorite shows of last year. Amidst huh. like really good TV, Absolutely. it yeah, was it was unironically year. like very fun. It's just so freaking earnest, dude. It knows exactly what it is. It gives like no shits. If you don't like it, you're not going to like it. But if you're in, you're going to be like all in. It's very If you very like fun. Silo, you might like Willow, right? <laughs> yeah, probably. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Do the, the sci-fi version of Willow, W-I-L-O. It's D and D with a beautiful cast of characters who, out of out of care out of character, out of character, they love each other as friends outside of the show. Um, it, they don't is... murder each other's parents. Uh, yeah, yeah, they don't. They're really, murder... they're well, great. <laughs> um, no, anyway. cool. you can murder your own parents. That's fine. In space. Right. In space. You, space can you can murder your own, your own parents anytime you want. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, looks like I, did it. I am just going to get the hell off the internet now while we're on. <laughs> <my> <laughs> Bye.